Department and others and the Ministry of Defence. Lady Hale will explain the judgment of the court. The Supreme Court is handing down three judgments today, dealing with three separate issues of law relating to different combinations of people who are bringing claims against the United Kingdom government or its officials. The people involved are as follows. First, Mr. Ramatullah is a Pakistani national who was captured by British forces in Iraq in February 2004 and transferred to the United States forces in Iraq and then transferred by them to Afghanistan, where he was detained for 10 years. He is suing the Ministry of Defense and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, first under the local law of tort in respect of his detention, treatment and transfer by the United Kingdom, and second, in respect of the United Kingdom's alleged complicity in his detention, transfer and treatment by the United States. Secondly, Mr. Sirdar Mohammed is an Afghan national who was captured in a planned International Security Assistance Force operation in Afghanistan in April 2010 and detained by British troops until July 2010 when he was transferred into Afghan custody. He claims that his detention was unlawful, both under the local law of tort and under the Human Rights Act 1998. Thirdly, Mr. Al-Wahid is an Iraqi national who is detained by United Kingdom troops in the course of the conflict in Iraq. He too claims that his detention was unlawful under the Human Rights Act 1998. Fourthly, a large number of Iraqi civilians have made claims similar to those of Mr. Ramatullah in relation to their detention and treatment by United Kingdom troops and transfer to the United States authorities at various times during the United Kingdom's military presence in Iraq. Fifthly, Mr. Belhaj and his wife, Ms. Bouchar, are suing Mr. Jack Straw, then Foreign Secretary, and a number of United Kingdom officials and agencies for alleged complicity in their rendition by Malaysian, Thai, and United States officials to Libya and their detention and torture there. The issues involved are as follows. Firstly, in relation to the claims of Mr. Ramatullah, Mr. Sirdar Mohammed, and the Iraqi civilians relating to their detention and treatment by British troops, the issue is whether the doctrine of Crown Act of State means that the Crown cannot be held liable to them. Secondly, in relation to the claims of Mr. Sirdar Mohammed and Mr. Al-Wahid under the Human Rights Act, the issue is whether their detention is in breach of Article 5 of the European Convention on Human Rights. Thirdly, in relation to the claims of Mr. Ramatullah, Mr. Belhaj and Ms. Bouchar in respect of alleged complicity in the actions of other states, the issues are whether the doctrines of state immunity or foreign act of state, which may benefit the foreign governments involved, also benefit the United Kingdom officials and agencies. This first judgment deals with the doctrine of Crown Act of State. The principle that there is no general defense of state necessity to a claim of wrongdoing by state officials has been established in this country since the 18th century. However, under the doctrine of Crown Act of State, the Crown and its officials cannot be held liable for certain acts done pursuant to United Kingdom policy in the conduct of its foreign affairs. The claimants argue that this is a very narrow rule, limited to matters of high policy, such as declaring war and making peace, which are by their very nature not suitable for adjudication in the courts. It cannot, they say, extend to allegations of wrongful detention and ill treatment, which are entirely suitable for adjudication in the courts. The government argues that it must extend to certain acts committed abroad in pursuance of the foreign policy of the state, 
and in particular to the conduct of military operations such as the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. In the High Court, Mr. Justice Leggett agreed with the government. The Court of Appeal, however, held that the doctrine could only apply where there were compelling grounds of public policy for refusing to give effect to the local law of tort, and that there were no such grounds in these cases. The Supreme Court unanimously allows the government's appeals. The doctrine must be narrowly confined to a class of acts which involve an exercise of sovereign power, inherently governmental in nature, committed abroad, and with the prior authority or subsequent ratification of the Crown in the conduct of the foreign relations of the Crown. The class of acts must be so closely connected to the policy to be necessary in pursuing it. It extends at least to acts which are necessary in the conduct of military operations, which are themselves lawful in international law. Put simply, it would be absurd if the government could not be held liable for killing people in battle, but could be held liable for detaining them. The government accepts that the doctrine does not extend to torture or maltreatment of detainees. In these cases, on the assumed facts, the claimant's detention and transfer were steps taken to, pursuant to deliberately formed policy against persons reasonably suspected of being insurgents in the context of foreign military operations during a time of armed conflict and were thus crown acts of state for which the government cannot be held liable in the United Kingdom courts.